So I had a print failure where I printed overnight and the part fell off the build plate and then repeatedly cured on the surface of the vat uh, for a couple hundred layers. And so when that happens, uh, some resins, and this seems to happen more with some resins than others, for instance, uh, with fun to do I've never actually had this issue with failed prints, but I was printing with maker juice, and I think that you know maybe the shrinkage has something to do with it, but in either case, when you repeatedly cure resin on the same spot, that resin will shrink, and when it shrinks, it can dislodge the film from the bottom of the vat. And so we can see that here. Right, this spot, which um, if I point it out directly, you can probably see here, this spot here um, lifted up a bit, and I was printing around around here or so, um, and this spot here lifted up, and uh, some resin got underneath it. Um, you'll see that it doesn't look super horrible because I did push a lot of it out. It is possible maybe with small incidents that you could push it out. And this level of fogginess, um, maybe above 75 micron XY resolution, won't necessarily make a huge difference in printing. Um, it's surprising how much um, fogginess there can be would, and have that you know, not significantly affect the print. But uh, this is a bigger area. Um, it has some dark spots and there's a, there's a depression that may be hard to see. And so I am going to try to remove the FEP film from this vat, uh, clean everything up, and then lay it back down. So the first thing I'm going to need to do is get the existing FEP film off. And to do that, I'm gonna to have to find a, an easily accessible point which I think is going to be this corner here. Yeah, and get a little bit underneath it with my razor scraper. Be very careful not to damage the, uh, the silicone. And so, let's, uh, so I'm gonna pull this up. You need to be a bit careful, whoops, dropped it. Because the, you don't want to tear the silicone. If you tear the silicone, that part will not come back clear anymore. So I'm going to try to keep a firm grip on this, but move slowly. Move slowly. There we go. So we got the film off. Um, looks like a little bit cured underneath. Okay. This is going to need to be clean. Be careful with that. This also seems to have a little bit of resin 
cured on the bottom, two little dots there. Try to get that off. Of course, the problem is that this FAP film is two-sided. Um, it seems to be the same on both sides, but actually it is microscopically roughened on one side. And so it may be very, there we go. Okay. The second one. All right. Did a better job on the second one. I want to get in on a corner, and then, and then get rid of it. And so, I'm gonna put this film into a beaker of water, and then. Uh, soapy water rather put that in the ultrasonic for a while you could probably wash it off with alcohol also and I probably will do an alcohol rinse um, and then I'll have to clean up this vat you'll see here that there's two spots actually that have gotten a bit of resin there's a spot where the lift occurred right here and I'm gonna have to try to clean that up as much as possible while maintaining the smooth finish of the rest. What I don't want to do is in the process of cleaning, accidentally damage the surface elsewhere, which means no touching this silicone. Uh, you can't touch the silicone with anything. And then when I was removing the film, there might have been some residual resin sticking to the uh, exposed part of the silicone here. I might have rubbed some in underneath. So I'm going to have to try to clean that off and do so in a way that, and do it mainly through rinsing, um, probably with IPA, rather than with uh, rubbing with anything. Um, maybe when it's wet, I could use gloved fingers. Um, I'll let you know if that works, uh, but definitely no rags, nothing cloth or rough. Okay, so everything is cleaned up and dry. I've got the sheet of FEP film here. And the sheet of film we've got here um, is two-sided. The two sides of this film are not the same. Um, one side of this film is rough uh, to a kind of a microscopic degree compared to the other side. And we want the rough side down. Um, it can be difficult when looking at the film to tell whether or not you are um, on the rough side or the smooth side. Uh, there are two. The easiest way actually to tell which side is which is to spritz a little alcohol on the surface. The two sides will behave very differently. On the smooth side, the alcohol will beat up quickly, and if you shoot alcohol on it while you're holding it, um, holding the sheet up vertically like this, it'll form legs like you might have on the side of a, of a, of a glass of wine or liquor. Right? If you shoot IPA onto the rough side, the rough side will kind of, the, the liquid will spread out smoothly. Right. And the difference will be quite obvious between the side that beads up and forms legs versus the side that where the, uh, where the IPA kind of spreads out uh, smoothly. And you want the side that spreads out smoothly, that is the rough side, and you want the rough side down facing the, uh, the vat. Now we've got to get the film in, and you you roughly want to get the film exactly in the spot that it was at before um, it lifted. And with a V2 vat, it's relatively easy to tell um, if you've used your vat before because there'll be a outline, a clear outline of all of the parts of the vat that have never been touched by resin. And that is the uh, that's the outline of where the film was before. Now, 
you might not be able to get it back exactly and that's okay because the film is of course oversized compared to the size of the build plate. Uh, so we do want to get it close, but if you're a couple of millimeters off any direction, you will be okay, but you don't want to be radically off. Also notice that on one side, particularly for me, this side here, is where the film butts almost up against the sidewall. Um, and that's a useful guide for us to start to make sure that we're lined up relatively straight. Um, and so I'm going to go down and we don't need to spritz this or do anything. The, the, uh, the soft silicone will grip and pull down and you won't need to use any adhesive or anything to hold it down. You will, however, need to make sure that, um, that you don't trap any air bubbles underneath. Um, the soft silicone will naturally push out air bubbles. It's not nearly as hard as applying films or dealing with the hard silicone, but you do need to be careful because you can't smooth things out. Um, so I will start going in here, trying to align this relatively straight. trying to get it close enough to the edge so that it's roughly as close to the edge as it was before all right and then I'm going to start to lower it down and I want to do so very slowly. Push down here so it'll get a little bit of purchase. But I need to make sure that the air is exits as we go along. Caught a little air bubble there. I'm going to peel back and put it back down again. seems like going through and doing kind of even strokes across with my finger seems to work better, be a little bit smoother.
little bit tricky. Now we're getting to the end. Guess I'll work my way kind of diagonally now out towards this corner. This is the first time I'm doing this actually, so. That's not bad at all. You could see a little bit when on the bare silicone, the spot where the um, where the resin got in was a little bit cloudier. But now that the film is sitting on top of it, you can't tell at all. And so good lining up on this end was worked out well. Caught a little air bubble down here, way out in the corner. That isn't going to matter because we never print there. And honestly, little air bubbles and stuff aren't going to make a huge difference either. You might see something on the surface on those spots, uh, but it's it's very likely that you that you won't. So here's a little rough spot. This is where. I had the bit of resin stuck to the film. That means I actually put it on the other way, which is which is good. All right, and this, this seems to be set. To be a little bit careful because I can press down on the film, but if you get your fingers into the silicone, you'll stick bad things will happen. All right, and we're good. And of course, this is the same sheet that, that went down before. Um, you might buy new FEP film, um, or if you're adventurous, you can try different films like PFA or TPX film uh, from uh, from CS Hyde or from McMaster Car, you want something that's uh, that's on the thicker side, four or five mils thick, easier to work with. Um, you do want to cut it to the same dimensions as the original. Uh, it's much easier to do this with a piece of film on that's the exact same dimensions as the original, rather than a piece of film that you only cut down approximately and might be too big or too small. Um, this isn't exactly the first time I have tried to lay down film onto soft silicone. Um, I did have another um, vat uh, where I, I put a gouge in the silicone because I was mixing too aggressively. And for that I tried laying down a piece of uh, TPX over that. Um, and that was kind of a lesson learned. First the TPX I had was too thin and so it forms ripples when you print with it uh, because that TPX is only two mil thick um, and so it doesn't provide a, a kind of a structural shell over the, uh, the soft silicone the way that the five mil stuff, the, the original stuff um, uh, does. And I also cut it down only approximately. I was just kind of experimenting and cutting it down approximately doesn't work as well. It's actually it's much easier to lay this thing down. You'll notice that I got it pretty straight. It looks pretty much exactly straight the very first go because it was exactly the same size as the original and so I aligned it on the bottom edge and it went down exactly the same into the into the clear area exactly as demarcated by the original. So definitely if you're going to replace the film altogether, cutting it down precisely will make the job a lot easier.
And so, okay, there we are. This vat is back in business. Thanks for watching.